I think a little bit later on today, tonight. Okay, it's six o'clock at this point right now. Welcome. Thank you all for being here. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through a couple of things. And really, the mo most of our time this evening is going to be um, dedicated to uh, really any questions that you, that you might have. Um, if there are things that uh, you're still unsure about or, or questions that you might still have uh, relative to you know, school and things that are going on, technology, what have you. Um, <laughs> uh, we get in waves even outside of school. <laughs> um, we've got those, those questions that are coming up. Hopefully we can answer some of those. Um, there's a couple of questions that have come up over the last week or two that, uh, that I'll definitely try to answer at this point right now as well. Um, but I'm going to pull up, uh, just our presentation. It's pretty brief. There's not a whole, like I said, there's not a whole lot, uh, but still wants uh, to make sure that that um, that we have you know the presentation going on so hopefully everybody has a chance to see this um and i'm making sure the date was right i had the date wrong last time we did this but uh, it looks like the date is right now uh, so it is october 20th 2020 just to give you a little bit of an idea kind of continuing on with meals and, and uh some updates on that homework uh, there's been some questions about um, picking up work and, and bringing it back, books uh, from the library and then lost and found. Uh, we'll do a little bit of an update on star testing and then uh, pictures and, and retake. We had pictures yesterday. Uh, we'll talk about how that went and then um, uh, what our retakes are going to be. So first of all, one more reminder from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the gym turnaround or grab and go meals. Um, these are eligible anyone from 1 to 18 years old. The student does not have to be there to pick it up. The parent can come pick it up. Um, just let us know how many you need for the children. The new thing, the new news on this is this will now be for the entire school year. Um, this goes through June. And so um, that's really the only new piece of information we have relative to our grab and go meals. Uh, but we are giving away a lot of them at this point right now. It's awesome. Uh, every single day from 11 to 1, I think we're somewhere in the realm of, of 25 to 30 that we're giving out on a daily basis at this point. Um, the more people that show up, the more we can, we can hand out. And the fewer people that show up, uh, the bigger chance we have of not being able to continue the service. So we do like to be able to give them out. Um, if you've got students that, that could use lunch, please drop by and uh, pick up a lunch. There's also a breakfast item that shows up in there uh, every day for the next day as well. So just an update there. Okay, <clears throat> homework. Uh, there are some teachers that are, have already kind of started this, and I, and I don't necessarily want to call it homework. I want to kind of call it supplemental work because it's work that is being picked up uh, by parents at the school, um, and it's, it's more paper and pencil. It gets the students out of, the, out of, you know, in front of the screen and actually has more paper and, paper and pencil and uh, maybe project-based work, um, just for lack of a better term, we're calling it homework at this point right now. Um, but communicate with teachers. Teachers will let you know if there is going to be a packet for their classes to be picked up. Um, the consistent uh, rule, you know, as far as we are concerned, is that those will be available for pickup on Mondays from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, if there's going to be packets that are going to need to be picked up, we won't do it on any other day other than Mondays from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we will expect that our teachers are communicating with families if there is something to be picked up. Um, the drop off for that work will also be the following Monday. So if there's work to be picked up on a Monday, then we would expect that the work from the week before is dropped off really at the same time. So um, just to be aware of that and what that looks like, I think more and more of our teachers are gonna start taking advantage of that. Um, there's a couple that are already doing it. I know uh, Ms. True is already doing that. Um, Christine, I can't see you right now because I'm looking at the PowerPoint, but I don't know if have you started doing that as well. Um, I, I am doing it, but just like once a month. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Again, the yeah, the teachers will let you know when um, when those days are. So pay attention to the parent squares. I know that sometimes they can be a little bit overwhelming, and you get a lot of them. But um, but there there is important information that comes out in those. So uh, please do 
and take a look at them when they come through. Um, library books. We've already started uh, asking some of the students uh, for requests for library books and putting requests and re reservations on hold um, in, in the library. Um, with some of our students, we are shooting for November 2nd to begin um, you know, having library books available and ready for students to come pick up. That is, that is a Monday. And so that would be the first uh, opportunity for students to be able to come in and pick, uh, pick up library books. So if they are interested in checking one out, um, they can get in touch with their teacher or um, I know that Mr. McCune is, is also uh, asking students to, to be able to put books on reserve for them. We can pull those books and then, and then uh, put them aside and get them ready to be checked out um, and picked up by the students by uh, or on November 2nd. That's the first date, again, that we're shooting for. At which point we would hope to be having library book checkouts um, and returns weekly on Mondays at that point. So, um, so if you want, library books, then uh, we just need to make sure that we're communicating with teachers so that we know uh, what we need to be able to put on reserve for students. Um, lost and found, we still have a lot of, a lot of stuff that's gone unclaimed at this point. Um, what we wanna do at this point is kind of give, you know, really one last chance. Um, and, and this is open to, you know, if, if folks want to, um, if you believe that your child has left something at the school, and for whatever reason, November 2nd isn't a day that you can be around, just let us know. Uh, but this is just, this was kind of a, a last ditch effort right here to say, hey, on November 2nd, uh, you know, when we're doing the, the homework drop off and pick up from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., um, we're also gonna try and put all of our lost and found out there and unclaimed items. Um, and if you see something that's yours or, or belongs to your child, please pick it up and take it with you. Um, if not, then, you know, we're gonna consider it donated. Uh, and if there is, uh, if, if for whatever reason, November 2nd isn't a time that you can make it and you believe that maybe your child has left something there, um, just let us know and, and we can hold on to some things and, and maybe even bring you into the gym a little bit earlier and let you take a look at, at what we have um, kind of laid out across our bleachers at this point right now. But, but we need to, um, we need to, to, I don't want to say necessarily get rid of that stuff. We either need to give it back or we need to, to donate those items. So. November 2nd, kind of a, a date to keep on the books there. Um, picture day was yesterday. Uh, it went great. It was very smooth. Um, we took a lot of pictures. Um, we got the majority of our student body in on that one. Um, our retake or makeup day, so if you would like, uh, it, you will have your pictures. The students' pictures will be back before, before November 16th. If for whatever reason it wasn't the perfect smile, it wasn't the, the perfect hair day, um, you know, just for whatever reason, you just feel like there's a better picture out there. Uh, retakes will be on November 16th. Also, if your student didn't get an opportunity yesterday to get in um, and get a picture taken, the makeup date will also be at that time. So from 3.30 to 5 p.m., it's the same plan A and plan B. Um, plan A will be right there in front of the gym. Um, if for whatever reason it's raining or the weather is not cooperating that day, we will take it into the gym and, and do a rotation with one student coming in at a time. So. That's what it will look like. Um, questions and concerns. Uh, there's just a couple of things that I wanna bring up at this point right now. Last week during the town hall, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut this, this PowerPoint off at this point right now, just so that I can look at people and have the conversation. Maybe. There we go. Um, last week at the town hall, there were definitely some concerns that were brought up relative to um, the technology and some frustrations with the amount of time. Um, and and I, I, I've encouraged, uh, we've encouraged the teachers to reach out to families just to kind of see how everybody's feeling at this point, what's working, what's not working. I know we got a pretty good sample of that at the town hall uh, last night, but we're trying to really get a, a full picture of, of where we're at with everything. I'm hoping that this week, um, ha, ha, things have gone a little bit smoother. Um, we, we have felt like as, as we go through this process and um, we get a little bit more comfortable with it, a, a little more used to it, that things will get a little bit easier, but there's no guarantee that that's the case. And so we do kind of want to know where parents and students are at at this point. Um, I, I will tell you that, that uh, you know, any, anything, you know, five, six, seven, eight hours a day, I just, I think that's really excessive. Um, and so if there are things that are keeping your student in that, in that range of, of doing 
you know, school work and being on, on the screen and those sorts of things, please, please, please let us know. Because um, we have to find ways to make adjustments to make sure that, that our students really aren't on the screens for that much time. And um, if for whatever reason, you know, we're, we are, um, you know, miscalculating things and things are taking longer than we expect them to, we need to know that as well. So we are asking that, that at some point this week, teachers reach out to families and just kind of see, just what, check the temperature. You know, where are we at at this point? Um, where are we at this week relative to where we were last week? Um, and, and hopefully some of the adjustments that have been made uh, with, with supplementing edgenuity um, and using some, some more familiar materials, um, maybe not having to navigate through all of that technology, hopefully that's made it a little bit easier for everybody and, and maybe a little bit more of an efficient process. So um, I, I am hoping that that's the case. Uh, the other question that came up, and I don't know if it was last week or two weeks ago, it was relative to star testing and, and doggone it, I forgot to put a slide in there relative to star testing when I told you that was part of the roadmap. Um, I apologize. Some of our teachers, and, and when I say some, I mean, um, you know, fifth through eighth grade will be starting on their star testing. Some of them, I think, started today, um, and they're kind of working their way through it this week. I do know Ms. Hurth in the third grade is starting with hers with small groups, um, but I also know our kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and fourth grade teachers are looking at starting around November 2nd. And so if you've got a K through two or a fourth grader, know that the star testing is going to be starting around, um, uh, around November 2nd at that point. Um, another, you know, another, um, another event going on that week and on that particular day. Um, one of the questions that came up relative to our star testing was, uh, how are we going to make accommodations for our students that are on IEPs? Um, I had a conversation with Mr. Lassier and, and he had mentioned that the majority of our students that are on IEPs, in roughly 95% of them, um, they, take, they take the STAR assessment uh, in the same environment that, that all of our students take the, the assessment. If there are accommodations that we need to make for those students, um, there is uh, time, you know, we can extend time, we can do it in, in smaller chunks of time if need be, but there definitely are accommodations that can be made as far as um, how that assessment is taken and, and, um, and, and how that process works for students that are on IEPs or 504s. We just need to know who those students are and then we can work with the parents on how to create that environment and, and how to um, facilitate that, that assessment. But at the end of the day, the STAR test is really to kind of find out where the students are um, you know, where the gaps are and, and what we need to do to be able to address all of that. So, um, so that's, that's really the goal with the STAR assessments at this point. Um, Rhonda, Christine, is there anything to add uh, as far as this? Like I said, there was kind of a, a thin agenda as far as tonight was concerned. The thick of all of this stuff has really been over the last couple of weeks. Um, but but I, I do want to hear what parents have to say or questions, but I also want to open it up to either Rhonda or Christine. I don't know if there's other teachers that are on here right now, but I would certainly welcome them to talk as well. Um, I just want to say keep reaching out, and I'm so thankful for everyone who asks a question when they have one and um, is just – you know, like, hey, I don't know how to do this, or this doesn't make sense, or this seems a bit much, and it's so helpful, and so please keep doing that. Your question, there's no such thing as a dumb question, and I just appreciate everybody willing to do that, and um, just know that we're here for you. Thanks, Rhonda. I feel the same um, way that Rhonda does, that um, I appreciate parents giving me feedback of how long things are taking, or how their child's feeling, because as a classroom teacher, I only I am only with them for like a half an hour online. So it's hard to tell where in the classroom you get a sense for, oh, the kids need a break or this is too much or this isn't going well. But when there's a screen between you or actually nothing between you because you're not there watching the child work, you haven't I have no idea if parents don't tell me. And so I've been surprised how well things have been going. And I appreciate parents telling me that, too. But, yeah, take the time to reach out for sure. And as a parent who's been going through this on the other side as well, I've got a third grader and a fifth grader. And actually, you know, I, I have to thank my wife for being our learning coach at home. But, but seeing the time, I mean, it, it can be time consuming. Um, and, and, you know, we've seen it on our end as well. And, and we're trying to give, <laughs> give feedback to the principal at Robert Frost as well, <laughs> which 
I happen to spend some time there, <laughs> um, and, and find ways to make those adjustments. And and um, you know we get it, and and there's we get the frustration. And and please, please, you know, as both Rhonda and Christine both said, just just reach out and let us know so that we can make some adjustments and find ways to to help your student out and help you out. I this is <laughs> this is tough. It's tough on parents. Um, you know, it's tough on students. You didn't sign up for. I mean, ultimately, we all are in the same boat and in the same situation, but this is not what any of us ever expected when it came to school, right? This is not a brick and mortar school where we, you know, we're able to send the kids there and the teachers do what they do and um, you get your opportunity to be home and, and work and, and, you know, be comfortable and feel safe with where your kids are at. Um, we've all been kind of thrown for a loop at this point right now and um, have to make the best of it. But if there's things that we can do to make it better for you, we just need to know what that is. And sometimes we won't be able, I mean, sometimes we simply won't be able to accommodate that. But what we can accommodate, we will, and we just need to know what those things are. So um, so please just keep communicating with us. I want to open this up to, to parents right now. Are there questions that you have or other concerns or um, things that we should know about? You know, um, I've always felt like as a teacher that, you know, there's, you can give as much wait time as you can possibly give, but eventually there comes a point where you realize there might just not be any more comments um, or questions. Um, here's what I would like to say is that if, 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 something, if something hits you, uh, you know, either this evening um, or, or tomorrow or really at any point, um, you can either email me, you can call me. I know your teachers would also be willing to take your emails, calls, comments, um, whatever those things are. So, you know, I, I guess at this point right now, please reach out to us and let us know um, what's on your minds, you know, what the concerns are. Um, and I'll tell you this too, if there are things that, that you've noticed that are going really well, don't be afraid to reach out to the teachers and just say, you know, thanks. They've, they've been working their tails off and, and doing a great job with this as well. So, um, you know, in the chat, Mr. Lockett. Is there something up there? Yeah. Are you able to see the chat? Um, I can pull it up. Right. Oh, look at that. There's more than I thought. Uh, will the school photos be put in a year end book? Is there a particular reason our students should get their pics taken through the school? Um, that's a good question, Sheldon. Uh, you know, I ultimately, I, I think this would be a really important year for us to have a yearbook at the end of the year. Um, th there's something really unique about memorializing a year like this. So yes, at the end of the year, that is something that I would like to do. Um, now, what does that look like as far as, you know, me going around and taking pictures? Uh, th that's that's going to be a challenge. You know, we may have to, to tell teachers or ask teachers that, you know, maybe on Tuesdays throughout the year, whenever you're doing special events, take some screenshots or take some pictures because I think that would be, I think this would be a really um, unique year to have to have a yearbook at the end of the year. Um, 20 years down the road, this, this is, this is going to be a year to remember. Um, this, this is the most unique school year any of us will ever go through. I, I hope, right? I hope. Um, to refer to the portrait photos, you're talking about the the ones from um, what, the the company that we get them through, um, as opposed to you know you being able to take your your student's photo and then submit that for us. Yeah, I mean, I guess the simple answer to that would be no. There would be no reason to do it through the school if that were the case. If you wanted to submit the photo, we would still be able to get it in the yearbook. I guess the only other thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check myself on that for one quick reason. The only other thing that I would say is that oftentimes the students have their full class on a picture and Portrait Master would be the only one that could do that if, if they're, if, if, and then I suppose your child's picture would be missing from the class photo at that point. So just, that one just hit me right now. I'm so used to that to the, the way it gets done at the high school. We don't do the class photos at the high school. So, um, but my student, my, my kids do have their class photos every year. And, and I think the only way that happens is, is through Portrait Master. 
Um, I want to thank everybody for being here. It uh, looks like we're going to be able to end this one a little bit earlier and, and spend some time with the families this evening. So I think that's always a valuable thing too. Um, I will, uh, I'll get the, the video um, out to everybody as soon as I possibly can on this along with the, with the, the presentation, though there's not much. Um, again, if you have questions, please just reach out. We're here and, and we, want to, we want to do everything we can to make this uh, the best experience we can for you and your, and your students. So um, we just need to know what that looks like. Okay. Thank can you I all. Real yeah. Quick? yeah, I don't know who's talking. Um, this is Heather. I have kids all the way from kindergarten to eighth grade. Okay. Um, and I just want to give all the administrators and teachers a big pat on the back. Um, I think that you giving the teachers more leeway and what they are teaching is working out really well. Um, and I definitely trust the academic family that we have. And I have to say that I'm surprised at how easily this transition is going. And I just, I want everyone to know that I am very thankful for everyone at Silvercrest. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate that. I know that our teachers appreciate it as well. And yes, they are, they are working very hard to make sure this transition goes very well for the students. And I've sat in on every class at some point already. Um, I can tell you the, the environments that they're creating in their classes has been nothing short of just comfortable and inviting and um, the students seem like they're enjoying what's going on. We, we know that every circumstance is different and everybody you know, kind of faces a different set of challenges, but from the things that we've seen at this point right now, um, it feels like we're, we're making the best out of, of a very challenging situation. And, and I think our teachers deserve a lot of credit for that. So thank you. With that, I hope everybody has a lovely evening. We'll see you later.